What's up guys, welcome back to the channel, Johan Lorenzo here, and in today's video we're gonna dive right into my dividend portfolio, which is currently sitting around $310,000. For those of you who've been following the channel for quite some time now, first of all, thank you. But you guys will know that I have a Robinhood account where I trade options, and I also have a Webull account where I keep track of my dividend stocks. Well, for my Webull account, we can go ahead and add a big old fat used to to the end of that because I used to only keep dividend stocks in there, but as of late, I've decided to add some growth stocks into that account as well. Yeah, I know, I know. It's only taken me about eight years to figure out the type of investor I am, but I think I've got it. Howdy, I've reached the top. So without further ado, let's get into the video. All right, guys, so here we are inside of my Simply Safe Dividends account. This is where I keep track of all of my stock market investments, and it's also a really good tool for doing your own research on different companies. Prior to this video, I've never added the stocks I kept inside my Robinhood account onto this platform. But for the sake of keeping everything nice and organized and not having to bounce around from two different platforms, I've decided to add everything here and that way it is much easier to follow along and track my overall portfolio. So right now at the moment, I currently have close to $256,000 invested into this portfolio and these are all of my holdings. Now, this is the money that I already have tied up in stocks. The other 54,000 or so is money that I use as collateral in order to sell cash secured put options. And by selling cash secured put options, I'm able to generate some extra cash flow on a weekly basis into my portfolio. And if by any chance I'm assigned on any of the put options that I've sold, I'm a happy camper. I'm only selling options on stocks that I really wanna own in the first place. So getting assigned is actually just as good as making the premium. If I get assigned a couple hundred shares, I'll just start selling covered call options and generate some more money that way. So I've made a bunch of changes to the portfolio and a bunch of them were some really tough decisions to make, to say the least. And once again, guys, I've said this many, many times in my videos, I am not a financial advisor, this is not financial advice, but this is just something that works for me. It might not work for you, but it definitely works for me and it's made me a good amount of money doing it this way. So I'm just here to share with you guys and maybe you can grab a few of these ideas and run with them yourself. I decided to load up heavily on some of the non-dividend paying companies here, such as Google, Amazon, and AMD, and obviously Tesla, which I've been trading for quite some time now in my Robinhood account. And to be honest, I decided to make this decision because the extra cash flow that I make from selling these options will be used to purchase more stock at a faster pace than just sitting and waiting around for regular dividends. Here's a quick example of what I mean. This week, I sold options on Google, Amazon, Tesla, AMD, Apple, Verizon, and Clorox. The total amount of premium I collected this week alone by selling those calls add up to a total of $426 in a single week. That's $426 in a single week, guys. My biggest dividend income months right now are the months of November, February, May, and August. And I'm collecting $580 for each of those months which is a pretty solid month of dividend income in my opinion. But when you make $426 in a single week collecting premium, it just kind of makes that 580 every three months look weak. Thing looks a little weak sauce to be honest with you when you compare it to the cash flow of selling options. But with all that said, I do realize that when pairing them up, you are now collecting premium and dividends and that makes for a sick, nasty combo of income. And that's my favorite way to do it guys because I'll have a faster, safer, sturdier source of income that way with building long-term dividend income along with the faster cash flow that comes in every week through collecting premium. So now these are my plans for the very near future. I've come to the conclusion that Verizon is just not the investment for me. I know, it's a popular stock with a lot of you guys and a lot of people like them. I used to like them for quite some time, but it just doesn't work for me anymore, guys. And to be completely honest, I kind of wish I would have never started the position to begin with, but hey, I'm not perfect and we're all human, so mistakes are gonna happen, and especially when it comes to investing in the stock market. It's just bound to happen. We just have to readjust and keep moving forward. My goal is to cut my losses here in the near future and invest that money into a better stock and put that money to work in a better way for me. My top three picks right now to choose from to replace that Verizon position would be Snap-on, Visa, or Aflac. I'm still debating on when to pull the trigger on this decision, 
but I wouldn't doubt it if it's sometime in the very near future. Well, there you have it, guys. I wanted to keep this video short and sweet and just give you a nice little insight into what my portfolio is currently looking like and what I'm holding in there. So don't forget to smash the thumbs up button. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't. As always, I wanna thank you all for watching. Any questions, comments, or concerns you have, feel free to drop them down in the comments below. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.